Is there heat between the Bella Twins and WWE after the fallout of Raw is 30 this past Monday night? Nikki Bella has spoken on several headlines regarding her and her sister's absence from the show. Speaking of WWE, the very latest on Saudi Arabia possibly making an offer to purchase the company whilst they explore strategic alternatives. Stone Cold Steve Austin, could he be wrestling at WrestleMania 39 against Roman Reigns, against Brock Lesnar? What do all of these reports really mean? Where does the truth lie? We've also got the ratings for this week's 30th anniversary edition of Monday Night Raw. Taker and Wyatt speak after their incredible moments this past Monday night on the 30th anniversary of the broadcast. Why was the steel cage match cut short? And who was meant to win the match between Bailey and Becky Lynch on the 30th anniversary special? And Mick Foley has revealed why he turned down an appearance at Raw is 30. Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of world wrestling entertainment. Let's start off about some major heat, possibly, backstage between WWE as an entity, I guess now being headed up by Triple H in a creative sense, and WWE Hall of Famers, the Bella Twins. Of course, they were at one point advertised to appear Monday night on the Raw is 30 special, but they did not. Why didn't they? They've spoken out as to why, saying that there was no plans for them, talking about the lack of representation of the woman's evolution during Monday Night Raw's 30th anniversary special this week. It gets quite interesting. We've got quite a few clips here that we're going to share with you throughout this show. And it seems that the Bella Twins and WWE may not be on the best terms coming out of this week's Raw 30th anniversary show. Brie and Nikki Bella had originally been advertised for the show a couple of weeks ago, but were later removed from advertising and did not appear on the broadcast. In fact, the only in-person female representation of someone you'd traditionally call a legend was Alundra Blaze, who was involved in a couple of backstage poker segments dotted throughout the night. This coupled with the Bailey versus Becky Lynch steel cage match being pulled from the show due to the Bloodline segment running over time has reignited fan outrage at the overall treatment of women's wrestling in the company. It seems this is something that the Bellas picked up upon too, as during an Instagram live stream, they implied that they knew WWE wasn't going to spotlight a number of the women who had been involved in the women's evolution, including themselves, Mercedes Monet, Sasha Banks, and Soraya, formerly known as Paige in WWE. Brie specifically said, there's a bunch of us they don't want to show. Now, we've actually got the clip of this, so before we get into the rest of the story, let's play what they had to say after the broadcast whilst explaining their absence from the Raw 30th anniversary special. How didn't they showcase anything from the women's evolution? But also the way we did our matches on Sasha there. Banks did it and they're like, we can't. And the Bellas, there's a bunch of us. And Mercedes is too over and we and can't say her name. There's a couple mm. other girls and Rhea. There's a bunch of us they don't yeah. want to show. That's fine. That's fine. That's... When you no. do what they don't want to do, it's they not don't what show you. Do. Certainly interesting uh, from the uh, the Bella Twins there. Now, the implications seem to be that WWE didn't want to highlight Monet slash Banks because of her decision to leave the company and Soraya because she decided to join AEW. The argument being that they still should be highlighted for their moments and achievements within WWE and those things shouldn't be taken away from them or not highlighted just because they made decisions that WWE didn't like. In relation to those names specifically, there was a clip during one of the montages shown throughout the night of Monet slash Banks winning the Raw Women's Championship from Charlotte Flair, and Flair mentioned the Bellas during her in-ring promo. The Bella Twins did travel to the area of the show, but it seems they opted not to be part of it due to their issues with how they and women in general are going to be utilised under the new regime. I guess if you were expecting the Bellas to be surprised Royal Rumble entrance this Saturday, that's not looking very likely at the time being right now. Now, it gets even more interesting because of this. So the Bella Twins, as I just said, admitted there were major that, that there could be major backstage heat between them and WWE in regards to the plans for Raw 30. Nikki and Brie Bella were initially advertised to appear at the event when announced weeks ago, but they were pulled from the advertisement the week before the show. They didn't show up at all. Now, then after all of this sort of discussion, particularly after what Brie and Nikki had said after the show, Nikki Bella went on to Instagram Live and further explained why her and her sister didn't appear on the program. We actually have a clip from this Instagram Live explaining her decisions, why she didn't appear at the show, also saying that WWE didn't actually have plans for them to appear. 
Um, so I want to take a second to get on and talk about a few things. Um, first about maybe a few wrestling headlines I saw. Um, because as you're going to see, the narrative will try to get changed. So some people look good and others look bad. And this is what's so amazing about this platform is we get to actually talk about truth, right? So um, this week um, from Monday till Thursday, Brina, I and Artem have been booked on Crazy Media because the premiere of Nikki Bella says I do is Thursday night, um, WWE owned show too, by the way. So why you see trailers of it on Monday Night Raw, etc. cetera. Um, we were hoping, I think it was weeks ago, there was talks about going to Monday Night Raw. They said they had nothing for us. So we were booked on media Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Then there was possibly maybe an idea, but um, our whole team, including WWE and everyone else had already booked us for Monday. Um, being in New York. So whatever you see of stuff, you know, all of a sudden stories change and whatever, that's to try to clean up and make things look better and throw it on people. Nope. Um, we had already all these commitments, by the way, per the company we work for and everyone else. So <laughs> I know people like to throw it on people, but I'm not going to lie. Interesting, certainly from Nikki Bella there. Now, following Raw 30, the Bella Twins took to Instagram Live to discuss the lack of women's clips on the show. After this and the scrapping of Bailey versus Becky Lynch in a steel cage match, the hashtag WWWoman Deserve Better began trending after the episode. It's still trending at the time of recording right now on Wednesday. Now, showing appreciation to the fans for rallying behind the statement, Nikki also had some comments suggesting that this kind of outrage was justified due to the lack of representation on the show. I remember when I first started watching Raw, and I, as you all know, because some of you like to give me shit for it, that I wasn't a fan the day I was born. Um, but I remember when I started watching Raw before I got into wrestling, and I was obsessed with the matches with Beth Phoenix and Candice Michelle and Melina and Mickey James. And... And that to me, for me and my era of wrestling, when I became a fan, that was raw to me. Um, and people have all their own memories, right? And that's why it's so important to have women represent because for so many of the fans, they have their different eras of China, of Lita and Trish, of um, Melina, Mickey, Michelle, Beth, um, Candice, the list goes on, of those incredible women of that era, then our era of AJ, Paige, Bree and I, and then so on. So I love that you guys are doing that hashtag, and I think you're going to start to see a lot of narratives play because people have to protect themselves, and you're going to get a lot of women blamed, and you're going to have people call them crybabies and all that, and it's like, no, we put in just as much as the effort and work, and all those women do, all of them, from every era, every person, and by the way, not just women, men too, because... I think there's some male superstars that can feel a way. But like anyone who ever walks down that ramp and gets in that ring, one, they're putting their body on the line, but they have a love and passion for the business. And everyone in any job, whether it's wrestling, whether it's... I think, you know, what? I think it's fair that the criticism that Nikki Bella has been saying and the Bella Twins have been saying coming out of the show, we're going to talk a little bit about this later on when it comes to the match being uh, changed, the steel cage match, which again, it was not the original plan to do the angle that they did. That happened because the time was cut because the Bloodline segment opening the show ran long. I think it's fair to say that particularly... I mean, throughout Raw history, women's wrestling has been uh, varying levels of importance, but particularly... Um, in particularly since what 2014 23 well, ever since that give divas a chance um hashtag trended and i believe that was 2013 around that period of time and ever since then i mean it's been a focal point of the show and uh, to not have that representation there of the legends that paved the way i think i think they're right to be aggrieved by that and uh that that, that is frustrating and i think they're right to voice their opinion on that because that's how the situation of women's wrestling got the opportunity, the platform in the first place was because they voiced their opinion and the fans voiced their opinion that the lack of airtime, the lack of ring time they were getting wasn't on. And to me, it's surprising considering Triple H is the head of creative now and he's been such an advocate for women's wrestling. I mean, really the, sh the spotlight he shone on it in NXT when he was the executive producer there, I do find it surprising that there wasn't that spotlight on it on the show. Now, if you're going to get into, oh, it's because Soraya's in AEW and Mercedes Monet's 
New Japan, I just feel that for those kind of specials, you get above that. You do get above that. Um, but I, I, I'm sure this is going to be a developing story, and I think it's an interesting one. I'm really interested to know your thoughts on it in the comment section below, so be sure to let me know. A bit of an update when it comes to a possible purchase of WWE. It feels like a lifetime ago already that WWE was bought by Saudi Arabia until it wasn't. Well, a few weeks ago, it was reported that WWE was on the verge of being sold to the Saudi Arabian Public Investment Fund. While these reports turned out to be false, Dave Meltzer has now claimed Saudi Arabia is still likely planning to make a bid to buy WWE even if it hasn't already. Speaking on the latest Wrestling Observer Radio, Meltzer explained, quote, they tried to buy Formula One, they got turned down, but they offered just under $20 billion. The last time Formula One sold, it was 2016, and it was sold for, I think, $4.4 billion. So we're talking six years later, and they offered $20 billion, but Liberty, which owns it, would not sell it. So I so don't think they're not going to make a bid, bid, big bid for WWE, because they are. They have a deal similar to the WWE deal, where they bring in the Formula One Grand Prix in Saudi Arabia every year, a $65 million deal. So they're willing to do business with them, but they were not willing to sell it. And WWE is looking to sell. So, you know, we'll see what happens. They were very, very serious about this one, and this was not a company that was for sale. They want to acquire something big, more than just the soccer team in Newcastle and Live Golf. They're looking for a big-time major mainstream media purchase right now, so WWE would fit into that role pretty easily. Now, again, this is one of those situations whereby you have to take a step back and say, this is Meltzer's thoughts, this is Meltzer's opinion, this is him speculating. He's drawing the line of, they made a bid for, to purchase Formula One, therefore they're going to make a bid for WWE. They might, they've got a similar deal, but at the same time, this isn't any closer than it was a couple of weeks ago. I think that's important to point out there, but certainly Saudi Arabia, absolutely it's in the running to purchase WWE. And there is fire to all of that smoke that was there a few weeks ago. Let's talk about WrestleMania. Of course, the Royal Rumble this coming is this coming weekend, which of course means WrestleMania season is on the horizon. And one name who definitely is being speculated about for a WrestleMania match, definitely training, it seems like, for a WrestleMania match, is WWE Hall of Famer Stone Cold Steve Austin after me making his in-ring return in the main event of night one of WrestleMania last year. Now, this is a really interesting story because it's had so much back and forth between people saying, that's not true, that's not true, that's kind of true, that is true. I got that wrong I got that right let's start off at the beginning it started with Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful reporting that Stone Cold Steve Austin was approached for a match against none other than WWE undisputed universal champion Roman Reigns now, there are rumours that The Rock might not be coming back, and Fightful confirmed that WWE had some plans in the event that that didn't happen, and some huge pitches. Fightful Select reported a few days ago that a pitch was made internally for a, quote, huge opponent for Stone Cold Steve Austin, which Fightful Select was told was none other than the tribal chief himself, Roman Reigns. Now, Fightful are reporting that they were told, at the very least, Austin's camp was approached with the possibility of it happening, which was said to have been for, quote, enormous money. In the summer of 2022, Fightful reported that Austin was approached with a deal that wasn't as appealing from a financial standpoint. Those that Fightful spoke to in WWE claimed they hadn't heard back on whether the more recent offer was accepted or not, and another source indicated that another, quote, big name was offered to Austin in the months prior. Now, as of early December, WrestleMania title matches, as reported by WrestlingNews.co, we did cover it at the time here on the channel, were slated as Drew McIntyre slash Cody Rhodes versus Seth Rollins on one night, presumably for the WWE Championship, and TBD slash Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns on the other night. Now, they're saying that that TBD could be Steve Austin, could be The Rock, we don't know. And it must be stressed that the report by Fightful went on to say that they don't know if that's changed. Now, Austin, of course, finally agreed to make an in-ring return at last year's WrestleMania, where he main evented against Kevin Owens. But reportedly, even up until the day, there were concerns that Austin would change his mind. And Fightful were told they weren't even sure he'd do the night two interactions with Vince McMahon until the day of the event. Of course, Austin seems like he's training for something. So this one would appear to be closer. Close, uh, closer we don't know. 
Now, what got really interesting about this is then Dave Meltzer went on Wrestling Observer Radio. And again, he's got a spotty record at best at the moment. He went on Wrestling Observer Radio the day after and he said that Reigns, he wasn't offered to Austin. Actually, it was Brock Lesnar. This is what Meltzer said, quote, it was Brock Lesnar. It's not on. It's been talked about probably for months because I know when that Brock Lesnar slash Gunther thing came up, I was told immediately that's not happening or that's not the idea right now. Maybe it's going to happen now. But the idea was some Thing that's a secret. So Austin was that secret. The match is not on, and it looks like we're going to get Lesnar with Lashley based on the show tonight, that being Monday night after Raw. Now, Meltzer was very specific in saying Austin was not offered a match with Roman Reigns at all. Until he changed his mind. <laughs> Until he changed his mind. And he said, actually, in specifically, he said the match with Reigns had not been pitched to Austin, but a match with Brock Lesnar had been. Well, Meltzer has now seemingly corrected the first part of his response. He tweeted, quote, both were pitched. Austin versus Lesnar was the original pitch. Now, it's worth pointing out that Fightful's report of the Austin versus Reigns pitch did also state, quote, another source indicated that another big name was offered to Austin in the months prior. So that would suggest it was Brock Lesnar in the months prior, which is what Fightful said, which is what Sean Rossap said. He said a big name was offered. Austin wasn't happy with the money. It's not happening. But more recently, he's been offered Roman Reigns for a lot more money. So it's more likely to happen. That's what the report said. I mean, reading comprehension, Dave. Come on, figure it out. Now, for me, I saw the response to this and found it quite surprising because, one, people said it's terrible. How can they do Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Roman Reigns? Where's the story? There's no story. At least when it's Roman Reigns versus The Rock in a part-time, but there's a story there. What story does there need to be? You're talking about the biggest box office draw in WWE history, arguably one of, if not the biggest WWE superstar of all time that's wrestled one match in 20 years. That was last year. Retired at WrestleMania 19 against The Rock. He wrestled, kind of, against Kevin Owens. And he could wrestle for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship against the guy who hasn't lost a match since 2019 in singles competition. The guy that's been champion since 2020. That's a big story. That's all the story you need. That's, that could be one of the biggest, if not the biggest, WrestleMania main event of all time. Talk about a clash of generations. The king of the attitude era versus the king of today. Oh, what a perfect story. Yes, it doesn't have the sort of parallels that Roman Reigns versus The Rock has, head of the table, tribal chief. But The Rock ain't going to wrestle at WrestleMania. So I tell you what, Stone Cold Steve Austin ain't a bad alternative. Are you kidding me? So I, I, I have no problem with that. At all. It's a massive match. I'd much rather have it at WrestleMania than in Saudi Arabia. Are you kidding me? So I don't I get it. People will go, well, what about, you know, the main, what about full-time people? What about Cody Rhodes? Well, Cody Rhodes can wrestle with Seth Rollins and win the WWE Championship. That's the story there. That's really the story there. You know, and I just, I'm giving, this is WrestleMania. Like that, that, that's big. And look, let's face it. But you talk about oh, what's going to happen with the full-time talent. Steve Austin ain't winning the Universal Championship. Of course he's not. Roman Reigns wins that match. But it's a massive match. So I have no problem with that at all. Maybe I'm in the minority when it comes to that one. But I really don't have an issue whatsoever with it. Let's talk about the ratings for this week's edition of Raw. Of course, it was the Raw 30th anniversary special. WWE's nostalgia-soaked episodes of Raw always pull in viewership above the level of what the show does week to week. But the numbers for Monday night's Raw is 30 special. Almost certainly blew away all reasonable expectations. Brandon Thurston at WrestleNomics reported that with help from a commercial-free first hour boosting the average by discouraging channel surfing, Raw averaged 2.344 million viewers across its three hours with 908,000 of those viewers being in the key adults age 18 to 49 demographic most valued by advertisers. The latter figure netted the show a 0.70 rating in the key demographic. Now, according to Thurston, total viewership is the most since February 17, 2020. Yes, nearly three years. It is the best best key demo number since April 6, 2020. For context, uh, it should be noted that Raw moved to close tapings with no fans starting with the March 16, 2020. 20 episode due to COVID-19 restrictions that lasted for 16 months with Raw returning live to arena touring starting with the July 19, 2021 episode in Dallas, Texas. So these are the best numbers that WWE's done since before even the pandemic broke out. And that's like a lifetime ago, right? 
Now, according to Showbuzz Daily's ranking of Monday's Cable Originals in the key demo, Raw both collectively and under its formal rating as three separate one-hour shows was the number one for the day. Hour by hour, the audience in the key demo dropped as the show went on, as usual, from a 0.80 rating for the commercial free first hour to a 0.69 for the second hour and then a 0.60 for the third. The next highest ranked show was the 9.07 p.m. college basketball game on ESPN, which officially took fourth place, realistically second place behind Raw, with a 0.36 rating in the key demographic. In total viewers, Raw is 30, dipped from 2.635 million viewers in the commercial free first hour to 2.373 million in the second hour, and then 2.2024 million viewers for the third hour. But certainly massive numbers for Raw is 30. I think they'll be very, very happy. As I mentioned, it's the biggest number since they've done prior to the pandemic. Uh, but it just goes to show, doesn't it, like what damage uh, the pandemic did to the Raw ratings. And just the drop off what it's been i mean i remember these uh these anniversary episodes back in the day used to get five million viewers something like that four million um and look this is a big number for raw but it goes to show as well smackdown brought in more viewers for john cena's return at the end of the year the difference between network television and cable television as well but certainly big numbers now according to fightful select sean ross sap is reporting that people of influence in wwe were happy about how the landmark episode of raw turned out on top of the positive reaction the show also also drew the highest domestic gate in the entire 30-year history of Monday Night Raw. Let us just backtrack there. This Monday's edition of Raw, Raw is 30, drew the highest domestic gate in the entire 30-year history of Monday Night Raw. Not bad. Now, for those wondering about that trial of Sami Zayn segment, and it was going to be the uh, bloodline acknowledgement ceremony, that didn't happen reportedly because um, Afra and Sika, they weren't reportedly ready or weren't able to attend. Rikishi, by all accounts, was unwell, so uh, he couldn't attend. So that's why that didn't happen. As I mentioned, they had that impressive gate as well. Um, some people were concerned about Giovanni Vinci. Of course, there was this six-man tag team match during the broadcast um, of Imperium. Uh, Vinci, Ludwig Kaiser, Gunther going up against Seth freaking Rollins and the Street Profits. And during the match, you could see Giovanni Vinci hold his knee uh, in a positive up update Fightful Select Sean Ross Sapp is reporting that Vinci is doing fine he was just selling so there's not any issue of anything like that of course uh, these were going to be teaming up with Ludwig Kaiser against Legado del Fantasmas Joaquin Wilde and Cruz del Toro in a semi-final match in the Smackdown Tag Team Championship tournament so there's no issues when it comes to anything like that. One of the big moments, obviously, on the program was, of course, the moment between Bray Wyatt and the American Badass version of The Undertaker. Now, absolutely fantastic. It's the first time we've seen The American Badass in, what, nearly 20 years, something like that, 2000 and, well, actually, late 2003, thinking about it. It's not even 2004. He came back as the dead man at WrestleMania 20, which was in 2004, but it was November 2003, wasn't it? So nearly 20 years since we've seen that version of The Undertaker. Now, one of the biggest and actually important Important legend appearances was obviously The Undertaker, who appeared alongside Bray Wyatt. And what many felt was a passing of the torch moment between two of WWE's most eerie superstars. Now, during the segment, which started with LA Knight cutting a promo and challenging any of the legends at the show to confront him, The Undertaker choked Knight, then passed him into Wyatt, who had joined him in the ring. Wyatt hit a sister Abigail on his Royal Rumble opponent. Taker approached Wyatt and whispered something into his ear. While we'll likely never know what The Undertaker said to Wyatt, the dead man has candidly commented on the moment on his Twitter page saying, quote, moments to find this industry, this one was special. Now, Bray Wyatt has also broken character to just say how much the moment meant to him. Of course, Bray Wyatt famously went against The Undertaker at WrestleMania 31 in The Undertaker's match after the streak was broken the year prior against Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 30. Not a lot of people know, Wyatt actually wrestled that match with near a broken ankle he rolled his ankle earlier on in the day he was walking around in a walking boot people didn't know if he could walk somehow he made it through the match and it was a fantastic match as well now Wyatt com uh, commented on social media saying quote this moment justified a lifetime of sacrifices for me a lifetime of people treating my uniqueness like it was a disease. Through all the bad times, I never changed myself to fit anyone's narrative. I'm proud of that. Thank you, Taker. Hashtag suck it, LA Knight. Now, The Undertaker then responded to Bray Wyatt's... Um, Tweet saying, quote, respect is earned. Seemingly the two, um, again, the torch has been passed. And what a fantastic moment. What a fantastic, great to see the American badass back in WWE. Now, I spoke earlier on about uh, Nikki Bella, the Bellas, their heat with WWE, their feelings about women not being represented properly during the Raw is 30 anniversary special. Now, obviously, a big contentious point coming out of the broadcast was the steel cage match between Bailey and Becky Lynch being cut short. 
Now, Sean Ross, Apple Fight for Select, provided an update on the change, the reason behind the change, noting that the match and entrances were supposed to get two segments. However, the opening segment with the Bloodlines trial of Sami Zayn ended up going long and led to several segments being trimmed. These uh, changes affected the Bailey versus Becky Lynch steel cage the most. This forced WWE to decide between doing an angle to set up a full match later on or end up doing a steel cage match that only lasted a minute or two. The end result was the angle with damage control laying out Becky Lynch inside the cage with the match being thrown out now it remains to be seen when they're going to do this match when they're going to do it at all now according to pw insider the original plan was for becky lynch to win the steel cage match of course it never happened so we don't know when the steel cage match is going to happen is it going to happen at the royal rumble is it going to happen i don't know was it going to happen on smackdown on friday i don't know but one thing's for sure it didn't happen and um i think that's really disappointing i think look it's a three-hour broadcast as well there were plenty of other segments where they could have taken the time over to scrap the segment did we need to have a poker tournament at every single reunion did we need to have that charlotte flair segment with rick flair did we need to have the kevin owen segment did we need to have you know there was there was a lot of segments that could have been cut way way short and could have just been cut at all they weren't necessary and uh, it's a crying shame you know because that was one of the tentpole matches scheduled for the show and we didn't get to see it and even when they decide to make it up and they'll do it on raw it's not the same as doing it on the 30th anniversary of the show when as we said earlier on a lot of people were watching 2.3 million people were watching it it's not going to be the same on any other broadcast and that's really disappointing Finally, one person that wasn't at Raw with 30 is WWE Hall of Famer Mick Foley was not there. Now, taken to his Facebook page, Foley revealed that he had been asked by WWE to attend the show, but he had uh, politely declined the offer. Uh, he said, quote, I was definitely asked by WWE and I politely declined due to the hectic uh, nature of my schedule. If I had not taken the past couple of days off and instead traveled to Philadelphia for the show, I would have been on the road for 32 consecutive days. I've been working on a new project, which has been great fun, but also requires a lot of travel. And I just really needed a couple of days off to relax and see my wife and children. So it wasn't that he didn't want to be there but he just had his priorities in order i saw some speculation foley has heat with wwe no foley doesn't have heat he has a life <laughs> and that's the difference but there you go guys it's the latest wwe news for you be sure to smash a like on the like button be sure to subscribe bottom right hand corner let me know your thoughts on today's wwe news stories in the comment section below and i'll speak to you again very very soon Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.